Color profiles, the million dollar question. A lot of you have been asking us what color profiles we use, what contrast, saturation, sharpness, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to talk about that now after these few clips. Hello, I'm Stuart Carroll and this is Drone Film Guide, the channel where we learn to fly like filmmakers. Now let's get one thing out in the open before we get started. Much as colour profiles are very important and look up tables and colour grading and all this cool stuff to make your footage look amazing, it does matter but it doesn't count for anything unless you know how to create a nice shot in the first place. So learn your craft, understand how to produce some nice aerial footage. Check out one of our videos, which is in the link up there, or there, I'm not sure which one it is, in the info button, I don't, I don't know. Check it out, and you'll better understand how to produce some nice shots, to which we can now apply what we're going to learn when it comes to colour profiles and colour grazing. So for those of you who just tuned into this video to get the answer, let's give you the answer. For 99.9% .9 of you, you want to film on D cine like with your contrast, saturation and sharpness at minus one. There you go, you can stop watching. For the rest of us who want to take this conversation a little bit further, let's chat about it. I have to say, I'm going to be honest with you, this is very much a case of do as I say, not do as I do. Because for the last two years we've been filming on D-Log, on the basis that D-Log gives you a broader dynamic range, it's a flatter, less contrasty image, there's more detail in the shadows and the highlights that you can recover in post, it captures the maximum tonal range of the sensor, blah blah, blah 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 blah. And we've been drawn into that whole D-Log argument, not least because the cameras that we film on have D-Log and take it to another level. That's how it works in Hollywood. They film their cameras, the Aries, the Reds, whatever it is they're using, they film on a log profile, which then has a lookup table applied to it to give this amazing cinematic footage. So if it's good enough for them, why shouldn't we use it? This camera, this GH4, Panasonic GH4 that's filming me right now, is filming on log. I'm going to colour grade that in Final Cut Pro afterwards. Why shouldn't it work for the Phantom? They give you a log profile. So let's have a little kind of think about that. When we first became aware of these kind of log profiles, it was with the GoPro ProTune system. And it took me a while to understand what was going on. The idea is that you're given this flat image that you can then stretch out in post and it retains all the detail in the shadows and the highlights. The Opposite of that would be if you put Vivid on or GoPro Color or in the case of the DJI, Go, uh, DJI app 4, whatever the hell it's called, Beach, whatever, you know, these kind of color settings. Those settings are baked into the footage and as a consequence when you take it into your editing software afterwards, you have a lot less flexibility to strip out that color if you changed your mind. Let's say you didn't want that kind of vintagey filter that you put on. It's a lot harder to take it off in post than it is to put it on. So that's the big idea behind getting a nice flat profile that you can then stretch out in post. The ability to play around with the shadows and the highlights and retain the details in the clouds and in the trees, etc., is exactly the reason that we've used D-Log in the past. A lot of people have complained that it's hard to colour grade. Now, I, I, I do sympathise with that. It is quite hard to colour grade in as much as it requires colour grading, but we'll take you through a couple of examples here and you'll see that, that it is possible. You know, it's, it's, it's not that big a deal to colour grade. At the end of the day, all you're adding back is some contrast and saturation. So let's take a quick look at some examples of how to do that. Okay, so here's quite a cool shot filmed in D-Log. It's a nicely balanced, nicely exposed shot. We don't have a blown out sky, we don't have a silhouetted landscape. So it's a good starting point. Let's just take a wee second to look at this histogram here. Just to try and get a better understanding of what we mean by a flat image. Zero on a histogram is true black and 100 is, is, is true white. So you can see here that in this image, because it's flat, we don't actually have any true blacks really and we don't really have any true whites. So we can do this by eye or we can use the histogram just to help us get an example. But here on Final Cut, all we need to do here is just drop, uh, drop the shadows a little bit using the histogram as a guide or using our eye as a guide. We'll take the highlights up a little bit just to add some contrast. Now in the middle of the image here, I'd say this looks a little bit washed out. So I'm just going to bring these mid-tones back a little bit, add some colour back in. Uh, and now saturation, let's just stick in some saturation. And give or take, job done. Let's just see before and after. Before, 
after. It's as simple as that. Here's another example filmed in D-Log. Look how unbelievably flat this image is. There's just no contrast in it whatsoever. It almost looks black and white. Check out the histogram here. We talked about zero and 100. We're nowhere near it. That's how flat this image is, which in theory gives us fantastic flexibility to color grade. So let's just check out the shadows here. Let's bring the shadows back down. Whoa, maybe not go all the way to zero. Well, we'll go to the way to zero just for the sake of this example. But as you can see, it all looks a little bit dark. And then let's take these highlights all the way back up to 100. Mm, there we go. All starts to make sense, doesn't it? We'll let go of that. I'd still probably bring these midtones down a little bit just to add a bit more contrast and depth into the shot. I quite like that already. I'd say that already looks pretty good. But then depending on your personal tastes, you can add some colour in. I mean, you can go boom, you can go super zingy, you can, well, you can take all the colour out if you want. But let's go somewhere in between. Let's leave it at that. I think that looks like quite a nice shot. Effects. Off. That's before. That's after. So there you go. Fairly straightforward. Just while we're on the subject, we can have another representation of, uh, of the contrast here with this waveform. And this gives you the same kind of idea, but on a horizontal basis here. Here you can see these blues are in the mid-tones and the whites are in the highlights. We've got 100 again, we've got zero. So actually on this basis, because of what we did with the highlights after we uh, messed about with the shadows, this is telling us the shadows aren't actually aren't at, at zero. Now I should say, nothing says you have to put the shadows at zero. Absolutely not. You can just leave them up here and go a little bit kind of washed out and a bit dreamy, or you can go contrasty like this. It's all totally up to you. But the point of the exercise is that in D-Log, you have the flexibility to play around like this. So we've seen that D-Log gives you a nice flat image with some decent dynamic range. Uh, the colors are quite easily recovered in post-production. So it's, you know, it's, it's a decent usable profile. Uh, and it's precisely the reason that we've been doing it for two years. After all, if it's good enough for Hollywood, it's good enough for us. It makes sense, doesn't it? So why are we being big fat hypocrites and telling you not to bother with that anymore and film in D-Cine like? Well, let's go through some of the reasons. The first reason that absolutely killed D-Log for us last year, Stone Cold Dead, I have to say, uh, is a matter of colour representation. If your entire video is going to be filmed on a DJI Mavic or DJI Phantom, whatever, it doesn't really matter how the drone captures the colours because you're not trying to blend it in with any other footage. But we use our drone footage in commercial projects and it has to be blended in with the footage that we capture on normally our Panasonic GH4s. As a consequence, we need a colour profile that is going to blend in and match. Now, let's just go through this example in Glencoe of a 1970 Ford Mustang, bright orange Ford Mustang. So here's the clip in question, a bright orange Ford Mustang. Yes, you heard me correctly, an orange Ford Mustang. So let's go through the same process as before. As you can see the histogram, you know, we've got a really flat image, no blacks, no whites. This is the clip. How cool is that? What a treat to be able to film that. Okay, so colour correction, exposure, let's bring these shadows down a bit, it's already starting to look a bit better, let's take the highlights up a little bit, let's bring the mid-tones down, add some colour back into the shot, it's already looking pretty vivid, but let's just put a wee bit of life back into it just for the sake of this clip. Okay, I think that looks quite nice. Now, as you may have picked up, I have been emphasizing the word orange. Does that look like an orange car to you? Because it sure as hell does not look like an orange car to me. I'll show you what this car is meant to look like. That is what it is meant to look like. That is what it does look like. And that is the footage that we had to blend this in with. Are you serious? That is not the same as that. And that is where we got a monumental headache with D-Log footage. The second problem we have with D-Log is that when you're out filming, you see on the monitor a D-Log image. You don't see a representation of the final result. Now, that's the precise opposite of what actually happens in Hollywood, the whole system that we're trying to copy here. In Hollywood, they film in log and the image is captured in log, but they monitor in some kind of approximation of what the end result will be. The monitors have a lookup table applied, which completely converts the color and gives you this nice kind of representation of the end result. It's the complete opposite. We don't get that. We just get the D-Log, which means you're trusting the DJI system to give you an accurate representation of the colors that you can then grade and post because you have this nice flat image, blah, 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 blah. As we saw in the Mustang example, that trust in our case at least was somewhat misplaced. So for practical reasons, 
we now feel it's better to see something closer to what you actually want to get on the screen rather than the flat D-Log image. The third thing that's made us go a bit cold on D-Log is this whole question of dynamic range. Now, as we said before, dynamic range is the difference between the white and the black, is the variation of colours in between. So the more dynamic range, the more detail you can have in your shadows and your highlights. You get a better quality image. That's all down to the quality of the sensor. You want as much dynamic range as possible. It stops you getting these kind of blown out highlights and these crushed blacks in the shadows. Now, that's all well and good, and D-Log is supposed to give you this nice flat image. But does it? Let's actually take a look at some examples and see if it does actually give you more dynamic range than, let's say, D-Cine-like. So let's take a look at this cool shot. Now, in D-Log, as you can see, we have a flat profile, as per usual. That's confirmed in the histogram here. We don't really have any true blacks. And on one hand, we don't have any whites, but look at this spike here. And this spike represents this blown out section here. So. Okay, on one hand we don't have any true whites, but we do still have a blown out section. So this is kind of where the wheels start to fall off a little bit for me with the D-Log argument. Let's look at the D-Cine like for comparison. Instantly, you breathe a sigh of relief because you see all these lovely colours and the whole shot looks a hundred times better. But what we're focusing on here is this blown out section up here in the sky. This is the whole point of dynamic range, is that we can retain as much detail in these highlights, and the shadows for that matter. But in this case, as far as I can see, I don't really see a huge amount of difference between the two. The colour has changed, the blown out section has gone from being a blown out grey to a blown out white, but at the end of the day, you need a pretty close inspection to see any difference. You can look at the histogram, here's the D-Log histogram, the spike shifts across to the right, that's just because the spike has gone to a white, but there's still no detail in that section, it's just gone from a light grey to a white. And as for the shadows all the way down here, well they basically don't even change at all. <laughs> so, I'm struggling here to make the case that D-Log has better dynamic range, and added to that, okay, much as you could say, well, this maybe has more dynamic range because it's a bit grey, but no one's going to present a shot like this. You then have to colour grade it, because that looks absolutely ridiculous. So let's just go through our wee colour grading process again, add in some shadows, add in some highlights, just to kind of balance out that histogram. See, look at that, we've gone too far. That's blowing out those, those highlights. So let's take the, that spike to 100. Still looks pretty horrible to me. Uh, let's raise these mid-tones. And let's just add a ton of saturation. Okay, so much better. Let's compare that with decent alike. Not bad, pretty close, not a million miles off. Begs the question though, why bother? So having concluded in our opinion that D-Log gives you poorer colour representation, it's, uh, it's difficult to use on site because you don't actually get any kind of approximation of the image that you're actually capturing. The dynamic range benefit is questionable at best. Then the, the fourth reason to go a little bit cold on D-Log in our case is why the hell bother? Why, why would you go to all that trouble? if it's not actually producing any benefits. Go to another colour profile. In our case, we recommend d -Cinelike because we do still recommend trying to get something a little bit flatter so that you do have some flexibility in post, but without giving this massive headache of all the problems that we've just mentioned before. Remember as well, within d -Cinelike or any other profile, you can tweak the settings a little bit as well. So you can turn the sharpness down to minus one because sometimes the uh, drone footage is a little bit crispy. You know, it's, it's very, very high quality, but it's a little bit crispy when you're blending it in with other cameras. You can turn the contrast down. That just brings the histogram in a little bit, brings your shadows and your highlights in a little bit to give you that extra flexibility in post. And you can turn the saturation down as well, just to make it a little bit less zingy. It is very easy in post to turn the saturation up. So, at the end of the day, that brings us to our recommendation that not only are we recommending to you, but we have finally figured out and are recommending to ourselves. This is exactly what we will do going forwards. d like minus one in sharpness, minus one in contrast, minus one in saturation. Easy. Leave it at that. So, not gonna lie, it feels good to get that off my chest. It's taken us a long time to figure this out. Alina and I, we discussed this at huge length, uh, for not just for drone footage, but for 
All the other stuff that we do, we're professional filmmakers, so we've been doing this for years now, calibrating footage and various bits of software. The moment we use Final Cut Pro, which I know some of you are saying, oh, it's too expensive, I don't have that, but it doesn't really make any difference. You can, you can do it in any software. You can turn the contrast and saturation up or down in any software, so don't get on at me, just because we use $200 Final Cut Pro. Big subject though, and it's a, it's a subjective subject. So let us know what you think and tell us about your experiences and thoughts and blah blah blah. Leave your comments below and as always don't forget to subscribe for more videos and more content here at Drone Film Guide.